Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. We're taking a look at Rapid today. It's been kindly provided by Parawave Audio Design. So thank you very much for that. And this is to show you what this synth is capable of and what features have been added to the 1.7 update. These are just gonna be covered in this video just to show you what they do. And it'll be relatively simple, but then we'll have some future videos where we go into a little bit more depth into what these features can actually do on a deeper scale. So as you can hear at the moment, we've got a preset called sequence detection and then 115 BPM. I've got it 126. It's just a guideline for where it should be. But these are pre-sequenced presets, basically. And you can hear this pattern is playing constantly. And you can have MIDI notes in here. You can drag MIDI files onto this section and have full sequences playing. So very, very powerful. Let's quickly listen to this preset. I'll reuse these three very powerful macro knobs at the top. We'll start by bringing some reverb in, and then we'll bring the blibs volume down, and then we'll introduce some of the bass line. And this is all coming from this one preset. So enjoy this, and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so that was sequence detection, and how awesome is that? That's just coming from one synth, and then I added some drum kits from an external, uh, from Groove Agent, just one of the preset kits. But you can have kits in here as well. You can have the full drum sequence. So let's quickly go through the main features, and then we'll explore a couple of presets just to show you even how more powerful it is beyond this preset. So, as you can see here, we have our main patch location at the top, and you can click on here to edit, load, save presets, and reset it at the same time. And you have three macro knobs that can be assigned to everything that you can see on here and be controlled, so that makes these three macros very powerful in terms of building really complex patches. So this was controlling the baseline uh, filtering in, and then the blibs was controlling another layer's volume but via the filter from what I can see. And then the uh, reverb is just controlling the mix on the reverb. Then you have everything here, adjust the threshold at which the limiter starts working. So that is your limiter here and your master output. Uh, you do have on the first tab, which is M, uh, I'm going to call it menu. This uh, it could be mixer as well. This is your mixer area. This is your compressor, and it is a multiband compressor. Comes with plenty of presets. And then you have your keyboard range here. So if you want to make a split sequence, they're splitted. Uh, let's just load one. So if we pick Funky House, you can see that in the left hand, you can have a full sequence. And then in the right hand, have a nice sequence. And that's how addictive it is. I can't stop playing these melodies when you're just browsing through the presets. 
So you can see that's how that works. And then you have some sections down the bottom here for mix modifiers, volume modifier, and filter. Okay, and then the usual pitch bend and modulation there. So that is everything for that page. Then you have your layers. So these are renamed at the moment because of the preset. These will be layers one to eight across the top. You can see a couple not renamed there because they're not in use. And each one is identical. And what I mean by that is you have an oscillator here, here, and here. So you get three in each layer. You get the same unison and spread. Oh, we don't want to do that. We just, uh, I don't know where that was. Spread, and then you have a little bit of EQ for bass and treble there as well. And then you have your effects here as well as your usual stuff up here. We have a morphing feature, which you can morph your wavetables, and we're looking at that later on. Phase and random as well. So we'll look at those. Each oscillator then comes with an effects type, and this is where it gets crazy. You've got all these modulation options, sync options, bending options, there's all sorts. By far the best, and a 1.7 update, is organic drift, and that is just by far my favourite. It just gives that real hardware analog emulation it just sounds really really nice uh, and we'll look at that in a bit and then you these controls will be assigned as the uh, effect is applied so organic drift you're going to get warm and drift if you put phase bend mid a you're going to get bend and phase these change depending on the effects type you have in there then they're all the same down here and here that's all identical uh, you do have pitch tracking here as well and obviously usual semitone and scent options and if we jump into here to load a new sound we have wavetables and multi samples to choose from so wavetables you have all your common stuff saws acid square pwm all different versions of those and then you have so much more as you can see and that's without any extra packs to buy that's just the factory sound bank then in the multi samples we have basses leads synths attacks vocals effects instruments there's so much in here i'm obsessed with the piano keys at the moment uh, particularly piano fiesta adds a really really nice snap to synth that does and yeah you can load any of these in to the three oscillators so i want to make this clear if we go into wavetables and load source square turn the oscillator on when we click effects type here we get all these options under amplifier right down to noisy and they are your effects types but if you are to choose a multi sample and you choose that bass for example you're going to get a different set of options because these are multi samples and not wavetables, so you don't get as many choices, but these are seriously powerful as well. So don't just underestimate the fact that there's less to choose from. So let's just turn that back off. And then we move on to this section here. So we have a filter and, oh my, look at all the filters. My favorites are the low pass pros and these are part of the 1.7 update as well. And yeah, they sound really really good uh, they add a lot of bite into a lot of warmth and bite into your sound and we'll demonstrate that in a second that then moves on to the inserts and again you can have high passes low passes tone fuzz there's all different options there as well as serial and parallel low pass and high pass filters and then you have your mix section here and you can set it to be filter to insert or insert first and then into the filter you've got that option then this leads on to our arpeggiator section here, which is actually multiple, that has multiple windows. And we have envelopes, one, two, three, and four. A is kind of your master envelope, so that shapes the entire thing. And then the other ones can be assigned to different areas. LFOs, one, two, three, and four can be assigned. Sequences, one, two, three, and four. And you can see they look different, but you can trigger all different areas of the synth here. You can turn things on and off. You can change the notes. You can change the pitch bend. There's all sorts. It's pretty much endless what you can do. And then the arpeggiator section, you can actually have a full MIDI file in there that plays the MIDI file. So 
you can hear that is kind of giving that filter effect. And you can also just have that noted in by drawing them in as well as an arpeggiator. You do get the option uh, when you're on ARP mode to load MIDI or load a pattern. And that puts it back onto your pattern section and then you have all these presets. So if you was making an acid lead, that would give you an option for adding acid lead uh, MIDI data in there already, which is really, really handy, as well as your random playing orders and your octaves there, rate and obviously pattern loader there. And then that finally leads into the effects. And in the effects, if we click an empty one, these are all the effects. So you can basically make a full track in here because you've got everything you need. Compressors, transgates, glitch, tape stops, distortion, delays, reverbs, and even compression in there. There's a compressor. It sounds really good. Tons and tons of presets. Um, if we just pick one, so let's pick the compressor presets, and we can say we want a soft... Um, compression and then we can choose analog or digital and then we've got that lovely sound about it again if we hit hard we can choose again the same and change how that compressor is acting and you can again you can send this to the master so it actually does it for the whole track rather than just this uh, layer so there's so many options it's actually unbelievable um, that is it for the main body of everything then we have this section down here which is the modulation lane and you can assign up to 32 different modulation uh, destinations from sources to destination and yeah it's uh, it's crazy and that's just on one layer then you've got that 32 again on the next layer and the next one right up through all eight and there's another thing that I just didn't uh, mention if you hover over the button you've got a root option and it does a little green plus. And if you wanted that to control anything, just drag it to anything you want, and then you don't have to go down here to obviously route it by hand. You can just drag it to the bit that you actually want to modulate with that. So really, really nice feature, and that can literally be dragged anywhere. It's nuts. Okay, so we've got a good overview of how the synth looks and how many different things we have. Let's explore some of the 1.7 features. So in the bank section here, you can see features 1.7, and this is a really good place to start. So solo layer, and you can hover over. It's now possible right-clicking layer, button LED, hold control, and quickly unsolo all. So that gives you the ability to obviously change things at speed, increase your workflow, make sure everything is working as fast as it can possibly be for you. So that's self-explanatory. Now, organic drift. This gives your sound a more organic and analog sounding phase behavior. So let's have a listen. Let's load this preset. We have this sound and you can see it's moving. And let's have a look at the modulation down here. We've only got the macro one and two linked to the oscillator effects and amount effects so on here so that's all that is doing and the drift is giving you that realism as you would expect from an analog piece of gear so let's have a listen so you can already hear that kind of off tuned pitch sound So if it's not your cup of tea and it's a bit too much, let's turn the drift down. It sounds really nice. And once you start layering these things up, it, for keys specifically, like for piano keys and stuff and roads, sounds absolutely tip top. And that's why it's one of my favorite features. And to obviously access the organic drift, it's in this menu here when you've selected wave tables up here these parameters up here i just want to mention that they control the warm and drift here they've just been assigned to up there um, but if we add some more warmth and take it away we can hear what that's doing as well so it sounds less bright and and that's to emulate kind of how how things are built in the analog world and it sounds much much nicer can you take that edge off the saw wave so it's quite harsh 
and it just warms the sound up as it would say it does there. And if we turn drift all the way up, great for sound design, absolutely great for sound design. But I personally like it around 10 o'clock. It just gives that nice edge to your sound. So that is organic drift there. Then we have organic drift on unison, and this is applied to each individual unison voice. So let's have a listen. So it's applied to each unison voice, which gives it that really nice texture. It just sounds so nice. So obviously drift is up at 50%, so I prefer to have it around 10 o'clock, and let's have a bit more warmth in there. Sounds really nice. And that is applying it to the unison there. So you can see we've got four voices. And we can get this really nice, thick, warm analog sounding uh, patch. Really, really nice. Okay, moving on, we have sync bend modes. So we have A, B here. So let's have a listen. So you can see this is being automated. And what is happening is LFO A. You can see down here. So if we go to LFO A, this is modulating this wavetable back and forth and you can see that indicated there by the bend. So let's increase, decrease the intensity up here and increase it a little bit and you can see exactly what is happening. Beautiful sound. Then LFO depth. So you can just control it yourself if you wanted to automate that yourself or you can introduce the LFO just a little bit of movement or you can have crazy movement and then you can choose the speed and that's using the sync bend A mode here so sync bend B is very similar to A and what that does is it's still creating that scream effect like the previous one uh, but you're getting some phase options here so let's have a listen and if we remove the intensity you can see there's actually less modulation happening more and more and more and more giving you that screaming effect and again speeds, depth, can all be controlled there. Sounds really good. Sound design is taken to a new level with this. Okay, so now we're moving on to the uh, Low Pass Pros. So there's 12 and 24, and let's just see what it has to say here. So the Low Pass Filter Module emulates amplification and feedback of an analog filter and can have a resonance effect when uh, it gives that screaming effect. So let's have a listen. That's without the resonance. So I'm going to show you the difference now. The LP Pro has this amplify section. Listen to how loud that is and warm, and if we just compare that to a low pass 12 dB here. Let's keep playing it. Has a lot more warmth and depth into it, sounds much nicer. All depends on the sound you're trying to create. But it's a really nice addition. And again, that is the same for the Pro here. Let's just see what it has to say. Almost identical, but with a steeper filter edge. So this is really, really good for getting those really deep, plucky basses. Sounds really, really nice. So it just goes down to a lower, uh, a, a steeper filter. 
really, really nice, but it really gives you the edge, especially on trans spaces. It seems to work really well, and we can demonstrate that in a future video. Okay, and then we have some more of the filters here. So we've got the LPX2. Let's see what that has to say here. You can see it's a new ex variant of the Extreme Low Pass using amplification and feedback, which gives clearer resonance, I think that said. Give yeah, clearer resonance. So let's have a listen to that. It's got a really nice texture to that uh, filter. I really like that one. Very gritty, has that nice sound uh, for adding to bass lines again. Really, really like that one. Uh, and then we do have a couple more here, high pass serial mode. So uh, for those that don't know the difference between them, uh, you've got serial, uh, which is in series, and then you've got parallel, which is in parallel. So series means one after the other, parallel means at the same time. So let's have a listen to this one. I'll just play something random with the uh, keyboard. Okay, really nice sound to it, and you can see that's in the insert section here. Let's just make sure that's loaded. Oh, we'll use these. So you can see how they are working different together now, whereas before when they were in series, it was this one and then this one, and if they were cutting each other off, like if this was too low, you're not going to hear it. If this high pass got too high, you're not going to hear it because it's out of our hearing range, but this is working together. They're working side by side. So that's uh, it does sound quite nice, that. I'd, uh, I'd have to explore using that one a little bit more. Okay, so now we have a new attack booster insert, and it does exactly what it says. Listen to the attack on that. So let's hit this key and listen to the strength. That's normal. Let's put the strength up to full. got a very sharp attack. We can add length to it. And then our slope is how basically intense it is. Really good for stab presets, definitely, and using that on kicks and hats and things when you're building your layers. Uh, that is that one. And then we have our reverbs. So let's just look at all these quickly, uh, just by sound. Uh, I'll just quickly show you here. So the reverb is in the effects, and then you have all these different presets down here. But the new ones as listed here are Nuclear, Solar, Nova, and Space. Now you might have seen these in the new Nexus 3 as well. I definitely have anyway. Um, so this is a demonstration of the small reverb. Full mix, let's put a bit of decay on there. And a bit of modulation sounds really nice. Uh, but I tend to use medium to big when it comes to pianos. So let's have reverb solar medium. Turn the mix up. Starting to get a long decay rate on there. Then big. Let's have the decay up full. Just listen to that, it sounds so nice. So nice. And then huge, space huge. And 
and that's without even turning up uh, the decay rate there. But if we turn that up, let's just have a look. You can see there we're on space. So we've got nuclear solar nova and space there. That's going to be absolutely great for loads of like chilled and down tempo stuff or having that really nice background ambience when you're playing piano and your trance music and stuff it'll sound really good right so now we're on to the bpm synced uh sequences so let's have a listen so what's happening here you can play chords Let's just turn that down an octave. So you can see sequence A is controlling filter cutoff and macro one is controlling the rate of the sync, which is a crazy feature. I do love this one. So you can see here, it's just plowing through this standard sequencer. And we can increase the rate here of the, the pace of the actual uh, timing. So you can have... So that gives you a lot of control there just by altering the rate and obviously you don't have to have that BPM synced. That doesn't have to be BPM synced but that does help. That is the new feature, being able to use the actual BPM synced mode. Then we have uh, the sequence A by sequence B. So it's not controlled by macro one. You can actually use the second sequencer in the chain to control sequencer A. So you can see it's changing the rate here. And if we go to B, you can see the steps are actually controlling the rate of sequencer A. All very straightforward stuff, but a really, really handy and powerful tool. So that could come in handy. A lot of uh, trap stuff, down tempo, sound really good. Then we've got some BPM synced and it's more complex. Let's just have a listen to this. See, sequence A is controlling the filter cutoff, sequencer B is controlling the sequencer A rate. Again, just a little bit more complex. So, as you can see, the next one is the LFO can control sequence A. Let's have a listen. So it's a much smoother experience. So let's have a listen to sequence A. So this is controlling the LFO's rate. So let's have a look at the LFO here. You can see it's switching between these different rates. And that's all being controlled by this here. So that is a really handy feature as well. So you can see the diversity of how to control your sound. There's not just one way to do it, there are many ways. And then again, the delay is controlled by sequence A. Let's have a listen. What a weird sound that has, but it sounds so nice. Really, really nice. And you can see that's just alter alternating the time there from the sequence on the delay. So nothing special happening, but this is a seriously powerful feature in which we can actually modulate pretty much anything here using the envelopes, LFOs and sequences. In the sequence we have the analog keys, so let's have a look at what this says about this preset. So this is using organic drift for the oscillators, the low pass Pro 12 as a filter and the low pass and high pass parallel to colorize the sound and the reverb noba as effect. So let's have a listen to the keys. So 
So you can see Organic Drift is controlling these two. This one's a faster, it's a bit of a faster drift there, and then this one is a bit slower. Um, but it sounds really, really nice. And you can see we've got some of the detune on there to make up the use of the Organic Drift on the Unison as well. Really nice. And then we have the insert for uh, the filter first we look at, the Low Pass Pro 12. So you can see this is controlled by velocity. Really nice touch to that. And then the inserts are using the parallel low pass and high pass here to colorize the sound. So let's have a look at the macros and what they're doing. So you can see this is morphing the oscillators here. Colorize. It's controlling the insert, low pass and high pass. And thin. Taking away some of that low end, which is removing the detune there, I can see. And macro one is morphing oscillator C, which is not on. So it's removing the volume there, but it wasn't on, but I suppose that's an option that you can have. And there's a lot more things that they are connected to, but you can hear uh, the effects of these two and how you can add texture and color to the sound just by using these inserts. I really do like that. Then we have the screaming insert. Let's see what this one says. What is this trying to tell us? Let's have a look. Screaming insert. So this is a combination of using the sequences to control different parts of here. As you can see, these are constantly moving. Uh, the LFO is obviously controlling many parts and aspects as well as the sequencer. Uh, if we look down here, LFO A is controlling the, F, uh, the effects for oscillator A. So this LFO here is controlling these as well as the filter. Now LFOB is doing the filter, but the rate is being controlled here, obviously by the sequencer. None of these ones are being used. So that is controlling that, and it gives you that nice screaming effect because they're using the low pass and the sync bend A mode here as well. And that's just coming from one oscillator. That's not even having any of the other things on. Just got a bit of reverb on there, and that that's all that's happening. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, but that sounds awesome. Sounds so nice, so nice. And you're going to hear me say that so many more times as well. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Tone fuzz, distortion combined with high resonance of the new filters to create a classic overdrive acid-like screaming effect. So let's have a look. So we're using the sequencer. And I am going to assume, yep, this is sequencer A, controlling the filter cutoff, and it's getting more and more screamier, and that acid sound is very prominent as it gets up higher. And I've noticed LFOB is controlling the sense of oscillator A. So very quickly, just to kind of give you that little bit of pitch bending fuzz, along with the, uh, oh, I'm going to say overdrive then, the organic drift. Uh, we're not, yet. Yeah, we are using some detune, but there's no voices on there, so we're just using the drifting feature there. Okay, let's have a mess around with the macros. Never forget about the macros. So you can see this isn't changing the pace of this. It's just showing the different location of the different starting point for the cutoff. 
can increase that resonance. And then the drive is connected to the tone fuzz coming from the inserts. So let's have a listen to this. We'll just reset these a bit. And it does exactly what it says. It drives it and gives it quite a full appearance. That goes a lot thinner without that uh, tone drive. And that's just all holding one key again as well because we've got the sequencer there. And another feature that uh, may not be known to some people, if you hit the keys, it'll always start again. But if you hold it and move, you can actually change the pitch without it restarting. So like a legato mode essentially. Then up an octave again. Instead of it restarting every time you change. So that's a nice little touch as well. And then finally we have the analog emulator using organic drift combined with the pro filters to create favorite vintage synth leads. So let's have a listen. Uh, if it would help if we actually load it. And how beautiful does that sound? Even just the melodic sequence sounds good. But as you can see, this is being controlled by just a few features here. You can see that we've just got the velocity on the filter cut off. So the velocities are affecting where the filter is actually cutting off. LFO A is controlling the oscillator A morph here. And then again, LFO B is controlling morph on the oscillator B. And you don't have to use the arpeggiated sequence. We can turn that off and we can just have that for ourselves. And finally, let's look at some other presets to finish this video off. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments down below. Also, drop a like if you really, really enjoyed the video and want to see more. And finally, hit subscribe. Three videos per week and there's going to be more on this topic indefinitely. So, let's have a look at some tracks and then we'll pick some sequences again maybe. And then we'll pick some uh, arpeggiators because I like some of those in there. Shows off the synth to its best potential. So, let's have a look, sit back and enjoy. Okay, let's load a split sequence again. Let's pick up House Chords Rocker and we'll test these uh, three macros again. So let's hit the key.
And finally, let's take a look at some arpeggios. And we're going to pick one of my favorite, which is Carbon Acid. Enjoy this one. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know what you think of this synth, and do you want to see some more videos? So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.